Let's wrap up the features in Corel Painter by taking a look at photo painting. Photo painting allows you to turn a photograph into a painting. So let's take a look at how to do that. In the reference files folder, I have this image of a yellow flower that I took. And let's see how we can turn this into a work of art. So I've gone ahead and just opened this in Painter. If we look in the photo painting panel, then it's going to walk us through the process. So step one is choose an image. We've already done that. We can use the open image, or if you wanted to, you could browse for an image. Let's just use open image. So it's automatically taken our image and it's brought it into a new composition and it's added it as our clone source. The clone source is the image that you'll be pulling colors and shapes from. You can see our image is loaded here. And you'll also notice that in the brush selector, one of the cloning brushes has been selected. So you need to paint with a cloning brush in order to be able to clone or photo paint. So if we were to paint with this soft cloner brush on this canvas, and we'll just paint a stroke across the canvas, and we make like an X, what you're going to see is wherever we paint on the canvas, we're going to get the color that's on the photo that's underneath. So for example, in the center here, if we use a bigger brush and paint, you're gonna to start to reveal the flower. Now, all I'm really doing here is just bringing back in the image. I may as well have put white over the canvas and just started erasing it. So this is cloning in a sense, and you could add several photographic images together if you wanted to. But if you want your photo painting to look like a painting, then we need to do a little bit more than this. So I'm gonna back up a bit and do a couple of undos. What we wanna do is we wanna choose a different brush. So we wanna choose a brush that simulates natural media while cloning. So let's start with Bristle Oils Cloner. Now, if I make this brush bigger and I paint with it, then you can see I'm getting something that's a little bit closer to looking like art. We can paint with these bristles, and if I wanted to, I could go in here and paint. Now, it might kind of feel like I'm just guessing where I'm painting, and what I need to do is I need to show and hide my tracing paper. So if I hit Control T on my keyboard, I can show and hide the tracing paper. That will allow me to go in here and paint only on the areas that are yellow, and then only on the areas that are green and white and so on. Then when I bring my tracing paper back, I'm going to get something that looks a little more deliberate, like I tried to make brush strokes that followed the shape of the leaf and so on. Let's try another brush. Let's try Captured Bristle. Again, I'll hit Control T, and I want to be painting here in this area where it's kind of dark green, and then here where it's yellow. And I could make my brush bigger or smaller if I really want to get in those tight areas there. But you can see as I'm doing that, I'm able to make it look like a painting. So you would have to go through here and really just decide what you want to paint in, paint in all of these shapes, and it will take you quite a bit of time to do it this way. But if you want that hand-painted look, this is one way to do it. So let's try another brush here. Let's try Chalk Cloner. I'll just put a little bit of this down so you can see how it looks. It's kind of a nice chalky, smudgy effect here. You can look up on the properties bar to see what kind of properties these brushes support as well. For example, I can play with the grain here for this brush. Then I can get a mark that looks a little bit more grainy if I wanted this to look like a chalk drawing. If you want to start over, you can always do the select all trick and then hit backspace and that'll clear out all of your paint off the canvas. Let's try another option here for our brush. Let's scroll on down. You can feel free to check these out and experiment. Let's try Impressionist Cloner. Now Impressionist is going to give me multiple brush strokes as I'm painting. So again, I can bring my tracing paper back and then I have a better idea of where I should be painting. Now this might actually work better on the background. If I just use a really big brush and just fill it in, then I can go in with a tighter brush. Let's say square grainy pastel. And I can tighten up those edges and make this look a little bit cleaner. Now I'm being really quick and really sloppy here, just so I can kind of demonstrate the overall process. You would really want to take your time on this painting and don't fill it in so quickly. And then of course you'd want to paint over those little brown areas there to bring those in. I to make sure to tighten up that white and any areas of interest that you want to draw your attention to. Do a few little strokes here and then take a look at what we have. Now again, this is super sloppy. It's just meant to give you an idea of how you could do a photo painting. Here's an example of what you could do if you spend a little bit more time. So with a lot more work, it's starting to look more like a painting, but it still looks a little bit flat and a little bit unintentional. So how would we go about painting on this to add in some more detail? You'll notice in the color picker, it's grayed out, so you can't pick a color. You're just gonna get black and white, and if you paint, you're still not gonna get black or white or gray. You're gonna get the color that you're cloning with, 
And that's because clone painting is enabled right now. You're never going to be able to pick a color when you have a photo painting brush selected. So you'll have to select a different brush. Let's say acrylics and oils, and then real oils filbert. The next thing I want to do is click on this menu in the top right of the color picker. And then I want to disable use clone color. Now our color picker returns to the color mode and we can select a color or sample a color here if we want to. And you can go in and paint. Now, as you start to do this, you're going to find that it looks a little bit more like a painting because you have some brush strokes that you put in intentionally rather than just kind of picking colors. You can also highlight the edges and add more contrast than was in the original painting. And as you can see, just adding even a few strokes really helps this look a bit more intentional. You can always bring back your tracing paper if you want to have a good idea of where some of these shapes are. You can bring in some little leaves like this. And this can actually be easier than going in and cloning and making all those brush strokes by painting over the photo. So you can really do a mix of both. But again, this is just for example's sake, just to kind of show you what you can do at home. I'm not going to spend all day working on this painting. I want to move on to show you some other ways of photo painting. So let's go ahead and save this. And if I want to keep my clone source attached to this image here so I can work on this again later, and I want to save this as a painter riff, I'll just call it yellow flower painting dash hand. This is the hand painted version. I'm going to show you some other ways to do this. So I'll go ahead and click on OK to save that. And then if I wanted to share this on the web, I would of course save this maybe as a smaller PNG or JPEG, or I could save it as other formats for printing. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear this out. And I'm going to go ahead and do a save as, so I save a copy, that way I can keep my other version. I'll call this dash AI. And in previous versions of Painter, you could do some auto painting where it would automatically fill the canvas with strokes, but the computer didn't really have a good idea of what art should look like. Now we have artificial intelligence or AI that can look at a lot of different images to know what an image is, what a flower is, what a mountain is, and so on. And then when it tries to turn that image into a painting, it can also adopt styles from other artists and really kind of in a creepy way make a photo into art. So let's go ahead and try this. So we've already chosen an image here that we're going to clone from, but on step two, we can auto paint. Now right now, AI smooth acrylic is selected, but we could choose from any of these other options. The ones that are gonna be AI powered have AI in front of them. The rest are just kind of the old way of auto painting. So before we look at the AI versions, let's take a look at some of the older versions to get a feel for how much this has changed. So let's try oil painting. And then what we wanna do is go ahead and click the start button to start painting. And then we can go ahead and let it do its thing. As I mentioned earlier, it's just making marks all over the canvas, just like we were. And the brush starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller to get more and more detail. And eventually it's going to look like a painting. Now you can stop this anytime you want. Pretend like it's the microwave. You set it, you let it run, and if you want to stop it midway in the cycle, you can click that stop button at any time. So just watch for a point where you see that you want to stop it because if you add too much detail, it's going to end up looking like a photo again. So let's say we're getting pretty close. Maybe right about here is where I'm going to stop it. Now it's done a pretty cool job. It looks like a photo, it looks like a painting, but I would say it still looks kind of more like a photo and it's not really in a different style. And that's kind of the limitation of doing this auto painting in this old way. You can't change the style. You can't say, okay, well, I want to paint this flower from a photo, but I want it to look like an impressionist painting, or I want it to look like a pastel painting in the style of Van Gogh. So we have a few different modes we can choose from. We could do an undo. And instead of oil painting, we could do a detailed watercolor. I'll start that. And even if you change the media to watercolor, it's still not really painting in a watercolor style. There's not a technique being used. It's just changing the brush or changing the color palette to simulate watercolor. The cool thing about AI is it can actually recognize an image as far as the subject, and it can apply a certain style or technique. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop this one here. It looks kind of like a watercolor painting, but it really just looks like I may as well have applied a filter in Photoshop to it. So let's undo. And now we'll take a look at some of the AI modes. So let's try smooth acrylic starting out. Same process, you just click the start button. It's going to auto prepare the image for you. And it's going to take a bit longer because it has to kind of analyze the image to see what it is. If your image is really large in size, it'll also be a little bit slower on your computer as opposed to if your image is smaller. Now you don't want your image to be too big and you don't want it to be too small, but something in the middle is probably pretty good. So it's going to apply a similar process where it's going to make strokes all over the canvas. But now what it's going to do is it's going to recognize the image as a flower 
and it's going to do a better job of trying to get it to look like a flower. It's going to be more intelligent about the way it paints. And just like before, you can click the stop button at any time, but we'll go ahead and just let it run its course here. Now you can see some edge detection going on. It's recognizing the edges of the flowers, and it's applied a style. It's chosen a different color palette than our original, and it's attempted to make the brush strokes look like acrylic brushes. So to me, the AI painting looks a lot more like art than the regular style of automatic painting. Let's take a look at some different modes here. Let's try bold watercolor so we can compare it to the regular watercolor style. I'm gonna go ahead and do an undo. So I'm starting from scratch here because otherwise I'll turn that acrylic painting into a watercolor painting, which is okay if you wanna do different layers of AI painting. Let's click on start. Another thing you might notice is it adds this really nice canvas texture over everything and the colors pop out a lot more and they look more vibrant. Again, it just looks more artsy. And so it's gone ahead and stopped on its own when it decided it's done. And again, it looks like art, but does it look good? I don't know, that's kind of subjective. I think it looks a little bit sloppy and still kind of unintentional. So you could go over it with your brushes. Again, I could switch to a different brush. Let's go to our digital watercolors. Let's try new simple water. We want to make sure to disable clone color, so you may have to kind of check it on and check it off to make sure that it's off. Get that color, make it brighter, maybe make it more yellow. And here if I wanted to, I could go in and I could enhance some of these edges, bring in some detail and make it look a bit more hand painted if I wanted to. And now we can move down to option three, which is paint by hand, and we can clone color from source image. So if I wanted to, at any time I can turn cloning on and off here. And I can show and hide the tracing paper here as well if I want to. Now, this is the result we get from automatically painting it, but you're kind of getting a cloning from that. Let's try cloning a different painting here. I'm gonna use open image. This time we'll try Van Gogh. And it's really interesting to see that Van Gogh style of brush strokes kind of swirling through the piece and Van Gogh style colors. Now you'd probably want to go in here and touch this up a bit. I personally think it looks kind of sloppy. So one thing you could do is go to your blenders. We'll use maybe wet oily blender. And you could go through and kind of blend some of this up and make individual brush strokes if you wanted to. Or you could use directional diffuser to kind of smooth it out a little bit here and there in some places so it doesn't look so lumpy. Another thing you could do is go to coarse oily blender. That's a more subtle blending, but you could use it to kind of blend up the sky and just take away some of that digital look and make it look a little bit more hand painted. Do that here on the water. You can see that really does wonders. So that might be another way to get kind of a more hand painted look out of this without having to really do too much hand painting. But again, I'm being super sloppy here just for demonstration sake. You would want to take your time and really make this look the way you want it to. And then of course you could select other brushes and paint on top of it. I could get dynamic speckles, particle bristle, make sure cloning's not turned on for that. Go here and paint in my ridge a little bit more. Some little trees sticking up and whatnot. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to do photo painting here in Corel Painter Essential 7. Now another thing that I want to look at is using the clone source for other things. I'm going to create a selection here on my canvas with the rectangular selection tool. I'm going to go to effects, fill, and rather than fill with current color, I'm going to choose clone source, and now it will let me fill with my clone source, which is whatever I have selected here. So if I wanted to, I could cancel back out of this. I can double click here on the image and choose a different clone source. Let's say this beach sunset. Now I'll be cloning from that sunset, and if I wanted to, I could paint with my cloner brush to, let's say, bring in some clouds here in the sky and make a completely different sky. Or if I wanted to, I could select a specific area like this just by making a selection. And then I could go to Effects, Fill, and I could fill with my clone source. Now, of course, my clone source doesn't fit because it's a little bit shorter. So what I'll want to do is I'll want to go ahead and do my painting as is, and then I'll want to crop it when I'm done doing all of my cloning. So for now, I'll go through here. And I'll just try to get some of this to look more like brush strokes by painting over it so it's not so perfect. And once I'm done with that, then I can go ahead and just crop this. And there you go, we have a photo painting that has multiple clone sources. Now, I can only have one clone source loaded at a time, and if I were to save this as a painter riff, I'd be saving this embedded clone source, not the previous one. 
So you'll want to make sure that you're done working with a clone source before you switch to something else because you'll have to remember to reload it again. That isn't an issue, but if I were to do that now, since I've cropped the canvas, the clone source might not be aligned with my canvas and it just might not work properly. One thing that I could have done is I could have had that clone source painted onto a different layer. So I could create a new layer here. Let's load a different clone source like the flower. And for example, if I wanted to bring in just that flower, I'm going to be super sloppy about it here. I could take that and I could move that around and I've cloned it in on its own layer and that way it's separate. But if I were to start painting again, that clone source is always going to stay in a fixed position. So now I have two flowers and if I move those, they stay together and so on. You have a lot more control over your clone sources and moving stuff around if you're using the full version of Corel Painter. So if photo painting is something that you're really interested in doing, you might consider upgrading to Corel Painter 2020. But if you just want the essentials of photo painting, then this is probably good enough for that. So I'll go ahead and just save this masterpiece here. I'll call it Rattlesnake Lake Painting. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to do photo painting here in Corel Painter Essential 7. Now let's wrap up this course by doing a quick demonstration painting to bring together all of these features into a practical workflow that you can use to make art at home.